Hey, what's up, folks? Hacks playing here. Today, we're going to look at a new Buck Bounty player on the market. You all know the big ones, the big players, but we're going to have a look at a smaller one right now and we'll dive into this new program. All right, so let's have a look first at the ones we all know. I'm pretty sure you guys who love to do bug bounties are familiar with the big players in the market. And I'm speaking of Hacker One, which is obviously probably the biggest player of all of them. I am speaking of Buck Crowd, which might be as big as Hacker One. I have no idea. They're both really, really big. There is Cynic. Um, not so well known anymore as Buckroud and Hacker One, but still really, really big with a lot of fantastic security researchers working on that. But today we're going to have a look at Yes, We Hack. And I'm actually already logged in and I want to show you the interface and the details of Yes, We Hack today and give you an idea why you might not have heard of that by now. So. Before we start looking at the interface of Yes We Hack, I want to go to the LinkedIn profile. And what we see over here is they call themselves Europeans first or number one bug bounty and BDP platform. And although this is a company that was founded in 2013, not too many people know about it by now. And if we have a look at all the information that we can see over here. There's a bunch of interesting stuff. For example, we do see that the company itself is not so big yet as the others. They, they only have 11 to 50 employees according to LinkedIn, which is still a pretty small company. They are headquartered in Paris. So this company was founded by a French guy. And one thing that points or that I find pretty interesting that jumps into my eyes is their funding information over here. So what that is, is they usually have um, funding series where they get a big pile of money to grow the company. And if we look at that over here, there is a round in February 15th, 2019, where they got 4.5 million US dollars. And to me, that means that since then, they finally had some money, some, some capital they could work with to grow the company. And this is why Yes We Hack is getting more known, more famous in the Buck Bunny world. Anyway, um, enough for the boring stuff. Let's jump straight into the portal. And I want to show you the basics of it. What I like, first of all, is the pretty simple interface that yes we hack has compared to a couple of others out there and if you log in this is the first screen that you will find this is the report section where you would see all the reports that you've submitted to the programs once you've actually found any issues as i am locked in entirely new like haven't submitted anything this is empty for me this is similar to for example the inbox in hacker one um Let's keep going. There is a menu interface up here with not a lot of items. So we will have a closer look at the, the main points up here. So let's go to all programs. This is the program search of all the companies that have a bug bunny program running on Yes We Hack. And the first thing that pops into my eyes and what I find interesting is, is that the company names are not as well known as the ones, for example, on background and hacker one. So me, for example, I have not heard about Ceasable, Cyber Malvalence, all of it, and a couple of others. But all those are public programs on Yes We Hack where you can sign up immediately and submit reports. And I just wanna um, point out how easy it is and how how the few over here works and for that i will use yes we hacks own bug bunny program 
So if we have a look, we immediately see that there have been 129 reports submitted for that program. They do have a bounties and they do offer a Hall of Fame entry if you find something. And if we click on the program, you get the Bug Bounty Brief. And I like that. I like the color scheme. I like the information like they have um, put down all the important um, facts for every bug bounty hunter for every security researcher and most of the people usually want to know first if there is any reward if you find something and this is the first thing they offer you in this top left corner over here so they tell you they offer rewards from 50 euros to 10,000 euros depending on the severity of your finding and another really important information for you as a hacker is the key metrics of the program and what they call hacktivity over here is the key metrics of the program for example they tell you that there were 129 reports 16 times they only gave away a thanks and they usually only take around three days until you get your first response which is pretty good and this is what hackers use to select the programs if it would say 60 or 90 days over here you probably go to a different program because you want to have a response pretty fast and you can also see that there has only been a small number of reports this month which could mean a lot of different things it could mean that the program is hardened by now or not too many people have had a look at it i would definitely recommend to check out this program down below here we do have the important information of every single bug bunny brief you should always read that information before you start hacking so you have the rules you have the responsible disclosure policy you have features or components which are out of scope the most important section is probably the scope section because you have to know which domains and which apis mobile apps whatsoever you are allowed to hack on and there is also a listing down below here that tells you about qualifying vulnerabilities so they say they give you money if you for example find a remote code execution or cross-site scripting and a couple of others they don't give you money if you find a self XSS finding which makes a lot of sense it's just a lovely way how they list the findings that you're supposed to hand in or not so if you're not sure if you should hand in for example a click checking finding that you found on the portal come back here to the brief quickly check out this section down below here and see that click checking is not rewarded and this is it there's not much more information apart from the hall of fame down below here which tells you that those are the best hackers on their program so I like that they have all the information what you need before you can start hacking provided to you in a pretty easy way pretty nice way and super easily readable I like that um, so let's go back up and check out the programs one more time so go back to the list and let's see if they have a big number of them and if we scroll down all the way to, to the bottom you see that the number is not too big yet so it seems like also the companies out there do not know about yes we hack too much probably and still go with background or hacker one but this brings me to a different point as this is not so well known at this point this also has an effect on the ranking and if you look at that we're currently looking at the top 25 hackers out of the second quarter in 2020 and the best or the the guy who found the most vulnerabilities is a guy called Robbie and something that is pretty interesting to me if you look at the country over here the top nine people are all French so it seems like this program is a little more well known in, in France so far but not in other countries as for example the US or the UK or India or all the other big bug bunny countries also one thing that pops into my eyes is if we change this to all we do have for example the top 10 names in here with Robbie one more Saks, RB Cafe Hiskso and all those others but I was wondering where are all the big names and for that reason I compared it to HackerOne's top 90 leaderboard where you have 
all the names you know from Twitter, like today's new mayonnaise, space raccoon, inhibitor, and all those others. Like those are the names you typically follow on Twitter who are tremendously good security researchers who post a lot, find a lot, and share a lot of the community. I definitely do not want to say that those people aren't, but just myself, I haven't heard too much of them. So what else can we do? We can, for example, click on the Hunter profile, what they're calling it, and you do see their latest activity, which is actually the exact same term, for example, HackOne is using, which is pretty funny to me. And this is also nicely done. I like the way this looks. You see the last findings those guys have found. You see their main information like their GitHub repositories, their Twitter, any websites if available, or a CV job board. And track records, this guy doesn't have anything in here. So let's go back and um, check out what else we can we can do on on yes we hack so like I've said before they do have the hacktivity as a couple of other big names out there and something that I do find not too amazing is that in here you do not get any additional information I don't know if this has any legal background but for example on hacker one if if you find or if you go to the hacktivity you would see the finding and you can actually click into the submission and read at least a little bit about it at least a short summary or in some cases if the companies allow a full disclosure you can read the entire communication of the security researcher with the company and the triaging team which is pretty awesome i don't see that over here so it's hard to learn from those reports the only thing you get to know is that for example Pinchu over here found a resource injection vulnerability. Um, the CWE for it is 99. So you could Google that and check what that is. All right, let's go up here. I'm not going to go into the resources. There is a change log in here, API documentation, and a lot of other stuff. You can check that out by yourself. I want to go back to the programs one more time and show you how you can submit something. So let's use our Yes We Hack Backbone program one more time. And you have the Submit Report button right over here. And if you click on that, you can start submitting your findings. And also that I think is pretty well done. It's nicely formatted. You get all the important questions asked so you do not have to scrutinize first what they want to know of you because you can just go over the form and fill in the information you want. You can say, I found in Yes We Hack, it was a brute force attack and the endpoint was whatever, yada, 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 um, yada, 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 and just fill out all that stuff. And if you get down to the bug description, they already have a pre-populated markdown um, documentation or like a, a template for you which is also pretty nice because a lot of times you don't know for example how to uh, make a list and in here you see how this is done so you can easily format your report make this more readable and make the triaging team and the companies who are going to read your submission happier because they really like a proper formatted submission I can tell you that and you will probably get a higher bounty if you invest a lot of time or not a lot but a little bit of time into formatting this submission in a nice looking way anyway this is it you can chain bugs over here for example if you found a bug a which led to another bug and in total this brought you to a remote code execution you can chain them together over here which I also think is a pretty good feature and nice way how yes we hack is doing that and if you're done you click on submit report and you hope that the triaging team is not taking long and you get your bounty paid out in only a short amount of time all right this was actually it all that I wanted to show you about yes we hack what do I think about it? Maybe I'll sum this up one more time. I do think it is pretty 
cool that we do have a European Bug Bounty player as well, next to all the other ones. And I really like the interface. It's super simple. You get the important questions asked. You don't have to think about too much what you have to submit, what information you have to provide. You do have not too many people hacking on it so far. So I guess it might be a good idea to jump on Yes We Hack right now. And maybe if you're not too good of a hacker at this point, maybe you can still find a couple of low hanging fruits. So make sure to check this out. The negative point I found was that the amount of programs so far is still not really big. But as I told you, this company seems to be growing massively since 2019. And I'm pretty sure there will be more companies jumping on the bandwagon and will have the programs hosted on Yes We Hack. All right. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually want to quickly make you aware of the recent Patreon Hacksplain page that I have created. Um, have a look at that. It's patreon.com slash Hacksplain. Um, check this out. And until then, subscribe to the channel in the top right corner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching.